Well, I go, all right, you guys ready? PJ hits record, and he says something witty, and I'm like, all right, three. <laughs> Tight ends are too serious. We have nothing funny for them. Welcome to another episode of Boom or Bust, the draft show. Max Chadwick alongside PJ Clark, Tate Sigworth, and Nick Merriam. So we ran through our top 10 quarterbacks, running backs, and receivers in the 2021 NFL Draft. Going to run through our top five tight ends in the draft. Not 10, because I don't even know if there's 10 guys that are even draftable. Well, we're giving, you, we're giving you Whoa. eight if that makes you feel any yeah, better. Yeah, we're, we're basically giving you eight. Yeah, we're each giving a different number five. There's a clear top four, and then after that, we're each going to give another guy to watch out for uh, and break them down as they stand on our big board 2.0 right now. Of course, be sure to follow our Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Boom or Bust Draft. We're on YouTube. Anywhere you get your podcast, please like and subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, and for mailbag, please, please, please comment on our socials. Email us, boomerbusdraft at gmail.com. We want to hear from you, and please give us all the questions that you've got. Uh, and please support us, because support for us is brought by Manscaped, who is the every best in below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for this your family jewels. Read. They, they obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped, trusted by two million and four men worldwide now. Join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. To get yours, go to manscaped.com and use the promo code BOOMORBUST. No spaces, all caps. as BOOMORBUST for 20% off your purchase and free shipping. So please, please, please go to manscaped.com and, and support us by doing that. Uh, so let's go over the top four tight ends in this draft. And at number four is Boston College's Hunter Long who is number 72 on Big Board 2.0. Nick, what do you think about Hunter Long? Um, so he's a kind of smooth route runner, blocks well when he hits his assignment. He doesn't always find a guy to block, so I feel like he's a little bit raw in terms of developing as, as an assignment blocker. Uh, moves well for his size, good footwork for a tight end. Um, I think he needs to look for the ball earlier than when he's doing route developments. I think there are a couple times where you see balls get thrown and he's just like adjusting last minute. He's not able to get to them. Um, He's got long arms, though. When he fully extends on you as on a block, you're just not getting around him. He's, he just locks you down. You see it in his possession catchability. That's his big thing in end zones in the red zone. He can go up over anybody and make a catch. Um, a projection guy because of his possession ability. Um, definitely some ways to go in terms of learning, but he is a physical um, specimen at the tight end position. Yeah, good good route runner. That would be my biggest plus for him. Um, he knows what he's doing. He was featured a lot in Boston College. They threw to him a lot the last couple of years, and, and he's been pretty good. He's been solid. Um, my drawback, I guess, he's not really much of an athlete, especially when we're talking about the next three guys. He's not the, the big, you know, yak monster Brevin Jordan. He's certainly not Kyle Pitts and not baby Grok Pat Fryermuth. But, you know, I think he's going to be good enough. I don't know if unlike the other three that he ever like steps in as a as a tight end one you know just being like the guy like the other three i think are capable of doing but worth having on your team good enough blocker good route runner definitely a tight end two kind of guy mid-round pick i i don't have a problem with it yeah um receiving ability you know all of our ranked tight ends that's what we're looking at if you're a blocking tight end you know you can be undrafted um yeah so good receiver he might be the third best receiver in the class um makes some very impressive diving catches and kind of mm -hmm. like athletic catches when you watch his tape um 3.5 percent drop percentage uh, over the last two years he also had 89 targets this year um which is number one in the class uh new coach new quarterback new system they used him a lot more um, and the thing I think that maybe distinguishes him than other tight ends in this class is that he got used in a kind of a traditional pro style offense. So um, not the dynamic alignment and, you know, the half backfield and the slot. He was, he was pretty much always in line. Um, and that gave him a lot more experience as a blocker just in terms of, you know, how many times he was blocking in terms of snaps um, than other tight ends in this class. So that's kind of what I'm looking at if we're talking pros for Hunter Long. Yeah, I've got a third-round grade on Hunter Long. He's actually my number three tight end right now. Uh, you look up security blanket in dictionary, you see Hunter Long. He led all tight ends in catches this year and was second in yards behind Kyle Pitts, who we'll get to later. Uh, really good size. He's 6'5", 253 pounds, like Tate hit on it. Really, really good hands. Made some really impressive catches. 
this year. He wins in contested catches. He's able to fight through contact. 11 contested catches was third most in the country among tight ends. Not a great athlete, though, like you guys hit on. Not the quickest or most agile. Uh, really not great after the catch either. Only averaged three yards after the catch per catch this year. Uh, and only broke seven tackles on 89 career catches. He's an okay run blocker. Like I said, he'll be a great security blanket in the league. He's not a great athlete, but he could be a quarterback's best friend in the NFL. So let's go to number three, and that's Brevin Jordan from Miami, number 54 on Big Board 2.0. PJ, what do you think What do you think about Brevin Jordan? Uh, Brevin Jordan is a maniac. Je- Brevin Jordan is a yak monster. So for, for reference here, Brevin Jordan in, in 2020, 9.3 yak yards after catch per reception. Just going to go down the, the wide receivers list here for everybody. Uh, that's more than Devontae Smith. That's more than Elijah Moore. That's more than Jalen Darden. That's more than Tylen Wallace. That's more than Kadarius Tony. That's more than pretty much every wide receiver we talked about on Tuesday, than, except for Jalen Waddell. Um, seems pretty good to me. I don't, I don't know about anybody else. Might be somebody you want. Um, Miami has a history of producing these uber-athletic tight ends. Chris Herndon, Jimmy Graham, Brevin Jordan is next in line there. Um, not the best blocker. I think he's fine. Um, but, I mean, this guy is just crazy athlete. Play him in the slot. Play him. He runs these crazy seams in Miami. He had multiple 70-yard touchdowns this year. I mean, he just he runs by people after he catches the ball. He might be the best pure athlete of any of these tight ends um i i would i have i think i'm at, i have him at 55 you know mid second round i think that's about where i'd take him uh yeah first thing i got on the list is yak ability um like pj hit on he's a tremendous athlete who after the catch can just burn people um kyle pitts supposedly runs a 4 7 40 and brevin jordan runs a 4 7 9 so we're right there in terms of speed uh, and he's also really dynamic. He can be used from the slot, uh, on the line, or even in the backfield. Um, he saw a majority of his snaps actually this year from the slot. So uh, just a dynamic athlete uh, in terms of receiving ability. As for cons, I mean, body catcher sometimes. Um, and I think he still has some growth to do as a blocker. Um, sometimes the technique gets away from him or he fails to uh, identify his assignment. So a lot of things to like about Brevin Jordan. Um, the other guy on this pod who was along on the tight end two train with PJ for Mr. Revan Jordan, um, have an early second round grade on him. I don't really know exactly. I forget where I don't have my list up, but he's in the forties for me. I, I love Revan Jordan. And I think I the difference between him and past... up. I, I have him at, I have him at 44, not even 55. So I'm okay. even higher than I thought it was. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, they, the difference between him and past Miami tight ends, I think is it's very, uh, clear what he is at the next level he's a slot guy like he's gonna be running routes out of the slot i don't think you're gonna put him in line i think he showed some good you know hip solidity and ability to get in the way of guys in the run game in terms of blocking but doesn't really move guys as a blocker so and he's just smaller like he's just he's not gonna be an inline tight end in the nfl level he's gonna be a receiving tight end and i think he's the type of guy you get touches and he's just unbelievable after catch we talked about this already already he's a sick athlete i haven't seen anyone just do the basketball crossover and make guys fall down since jordan reed was in his prime and i was you know crying at how great he was because he was unbelievable and that's what i see with brevin jordan i think he's got that type of upside uh just because you don't have too many guys with that type of size and and uh, ability to get open who move well in terms of route tree, you know, and can beat linebackers. And then, you know, once they turn up field, linebackers not going to catch them. And they can also just run right over safety slash juke them out. Um, I think he's a great building block for any offense. He's just looking for offensive weapons. And I think we're all just a little bit too low on him going into this draft. Yeah, maybe me. I, I got him a tight end four right now behind Hunter Long. I do like Brevin Jordan a lot, though. He is a, a third round grade for me. Uh, unlike Hunter Long, though, he's a monster after the catch, like you guys said. Averaged eight yards after the catch for his career. Uh, broke 21 tackles on 105 catches in, that, in his career. Really great speed, like you guys hit on. He can run away from linebackers and even some safeties. Uh, not much of a downfield threat. You want to get in the ball in space. Uh, doesn't really do well in contested situations either. Only caught about a third of his contested catches in his career. Um, only 106 snaps in line this year. He played a lot more in the slot, which is where he will be in the NFL probably. He's an okay run blocker. He's a little small too. He's six foot three, 245. Um, he actually added weight to 245 this year. I think he's a really great threat after the catch. I don't know how he fits as a true tight end, but he's definitely a weapon for an offense. So number two 
on our tight ends list. Pat Fryermuth from Penn State, number 41 on Big Board 2.0. Tate, what do you think- got? Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna say maybe you should go first. We don't get to talk about a lot of Penn State people this year. Oh, we'll get to, we'll get to some. Jason Owe, Micah Parsons. Well, well we already some. did one of them, but uh, all right, fine. R. 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 Journey all right, Brown. Journey Brown would have been RB four probably in this class. R. I. P. Oh, boy. All right. I don't know about that. Don't know about that. Um. <laughs> okay. Pat Fryermuth. Uh. The biggest thing you, I think when you think of Pat Fryermuth is physicality. Um. Battling through contested catches in the red zone, coming up with balls that you know he's just reliable uh, in the sense that he's, you know, always probably going to come down with the ball. Um, And after the catch, he just runs like a really bruising running back. You know, he's just going to lower his shoulder and just truck you um, to get those extra yards. You're just a refusal to be tackled. Um, And I think he has sneaky speed. I I don't know. You know, I think the NFL will figure it out. And but I just uh, when you watch his tape, a lot of the time, I feel like defenders kind of underestimate his speed. And I don't know if they're just being, you know, poor defenders or if Pat Frymuth does have some sneaky speed that we just, you know, don't know about. Um, he's not an elite athlete, you know, in his sense of speed and athleticism, but just sometimes he just blows by some guys. Um, and I don't know if he's all the way there as a blocker, um, has some issues, I guess, on the front side as a blocker in the run game. But he's tight end two for me. Um, you know, if the Browns wanted to take him, you know, don't hate it if we're trading to Joku. Um, I think he fits that system really well. Uh, so the, the, the baby Gronk comps are obviously going to be there for Pat Frymuth. Uh, I, listen, I can't compare anybody to the greatest tight end to ever live, but I don't think it's like completely un. No, you I, just no I'm not. No, you I, I'm <laughs> Okay. Book it. Book it. Okay. There we go. We can, we can make the graphic that right there for you. Yep. Make the graphic. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm not, I'm not comparing him to John Elway and Patrick Mahomes. I guess social team is on it. Don't worry. <laughs> the social team is on it. Uh, Prep Firemuth is really, really good. Uh, my my tight end, too. I have him and Brevin relatively right next to each other. I have Firemuth at 40. I have Brevin Jordan at 44. Um, I think they're both high second round picks for me. Just athletes at the tight end position. It's the way this is going, right? We saw Travis Kelsey beat everybody in the playoffs until the Super Bowl, but he was the, he was the most valuable receiver in the playoffs for all of these teams. He might have been the best receiver, period, in football this year. So uh, you're bringing in these Pat Fryer. Firemuth, Brevin Jordan type guys. Tate said it. Bruiser after the catch. Had a, had a weird 2020, banged up, only played in four games. But you want to go back. This is a guy that scored 16 career touchdowns. It's a tight end at Penn State. I mean, that's, that's hard to do. They fed him the ball in the red zone. He's a red zone target. I think he's a fine blocker. Could be improved. I, I actually think maybe his first. Oh, Max didn't like that at all. Mm, I'll get into that. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm high on Pat Firemuth. I think I'm the high man period on Pat Firemuth. He's a top 40 guy for me. I think he's a better run blocker than pass blocker. I think there's a little cleanup that could be done there in terms of his technique, but he is strong. That's that's one thing that I think, in, in terms of the blocking, people will look at and be like, even if he's not great, it'll be fine, because he just shoves guys around, I think. Um, clearly a good athlete for his size, more of a possession type guy. He's going to play in line. Um, but, you know, he, he, made, he made do in the red zone when he was able to do it. He's, he's a really technical route runner. I, I don't think... In terms of like quickness and speed, he's really like beating guys that easily. But I think his attention to detail in terms of route running is excellent, and that has helped him a lot. Um, and you know, he's just another one of these athletes at the tight end position that you're hoping fits into your system. I feel like it's so hard to project these guys because, like, I don't know, there's like a Pat Fryermuth type every year, it feels like. And I, I don't know, like, who's going to get him and like what he's going to end up doing. But I mean, you could see what he could be at the next level. The, the re- reason I have him below him on that compared to Brevin Jordan is just because I think it's harder to project him as a receiving talent in the NFL than this a Brevin Jordan who you can just throw the ball to in the flat and he can just run, you know. But still, very good second-round grade. I mean, he's the best in-line possession player in this draft because Kyle Pitts is a wide receiver. All right, everybody get yeah, ready. Yeah, no, he, he, I, I think we can all agree that he's the best like, all right, pure buckle, tight end. Buckle your yeah. seatbelts. Here we yeah, go. Like, I'm he's he's here. the best right, pure right. tight end in this class. Now, obviously, there's a guy that we're going to get to that is a way better all around receiver and player. Uh, but I think Pat Fryer, if you're looking for that true tight end, this is your guy. Uh, tight end two for me, number 45 overall. He's a monster. He's 6'5, 258. He had a f- few plays where he just ran through guys. There's a play against Memphis in that Cotton Bowl where he literally shouldered a guy into the dirt. I, I think he just buried him. It was unbelievable. 13 broken tackles on 92 career catches. Penn State relied on him, man. Penn State, um, you know, with even with guys like KJ Hamler, they still relied on him throughout his three-year career. 143 targets in three years. 
Uh, I think he's a great run blocker. I actually think he's second in this class behind someone that we'll get to later on in the video. Um, but he's not the best athlete. He won't pull away from linebackers. His speed, honestly, I, I heard that he runs in the four nines, and I could see that. Uh, 8% drop rate That's in his career fun. is, yeah, 8% drop rate. He has okay hands, but I think he makes some spectacular catches too, so it kind of makes up for it. Um, he had season-ending shoulder surgery. is something to monitor. Um, I think it could be a really, really good all-around tight end as a receiver and blocker. But I'm this not ruling out. I just want to say, if Pat Fryerman slides into the late 20s, don't be surprised. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I, I totally think it's happening. The Jets pick? I hope not, but <laughs> could happen. So, like I said, Pat Fryerman is probably the best pure tight end, but not the best tight end because Kyle Pitts exists from Florida. Wide receiver Num one. Number seven on our big board 2.0. Nick, what do you think about him? We did a video on him, by the way, so just we just do quick thoughts. Uh, just tough to compare to like any other player who's come out. I, you know, there there really is. People said best tight end prospect since Vernon Davis, but even then, like him and Vernon Davis aren't the same player. Like it's just hard. He's just such a monster in terms of possession ability, uh, athletic ability on routes, getting open, just a mismatch. Like there aren't going to be safeties and linebackers that can stick with this guy, much less in college, but same in the NFL. Like I it just. It, He's this is the guy where I don't need to project what he is the next level for him to fit into an offense because you're just going to let him go and he's going to get open against anyone on any route. He's I mean, it's just this is what athleticism does at this position, right? Like he it's just a combination of size, speed, hands, ability to cut on a dime. He's he's the total package. And, you know, the Dolphins uh, probably won't take him at three. But if they did, like, are we going to are we going to say no? Like, it's not a bad pick. You know, easier one. I won't. I mean, he's wide receiver one. He's the best pass catcher in this draft, like period, the end, however you want to play him, wide receiver, tight end, whatever you want to quantify it as. I, I think, again, I said this in our video, for my money, he was the best player in college football this year. He got hurt. Happens. Didn't win the Heisman. Happens. Wide receiver one. Done. It, hold, okay. Well, Kyle Pitts is Darren Waller, <laughs> but PJ, can you make up your mind here? Is it Kadarius Tony or is it Kyle Pitts? <laughs> Who is it's like what? the greatest player on the face of the earth? Because you just keep flipping. Kyle Pitts should have won that. Kyle Pitts, no, Kyle Pitts, Canary Sony should have never been in a Heisman conversation. Kyle Pitts should have won the Heisman. That's my take. Kyle Pitts was the best player in America this year. Okay, I mean, we're just coming off the wide receiver video where you said Kadarius Tony is Jesus Christ well, himself. So he, he I just shouldn't have won the Heisman because of the injuries. injuries. I, if he played the whole season, I think it's a big argument. But because of the injuries, exactly. he should not have no, won. No, exactly. I, okay. And I acknowledge that. He got hurt. Okay. Yeah. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's I just wanted to you know for the viewers I wanted to clarify that. Kyle point. Pitts is best player in the country this year. Finn done. Kyle, Kyle Pitts was outstanding. And again, if you <laughs> want to see our, our thoughts on him, check out the video above. Um, so those are like the guys that everyone has is their clear top four. And the next guys on you know, the tight end list uh, is kind of up in the air. So I wanted to go over who our next best tight end is. PJ, who do you have as your next best tight end? Um. I don't know if he's necessarily going to finish as my next best tight end, but I would be remiss if I did not mention Tommy Tremble in this video. Uh, Notre Dame, the, t the tight end factory, every year they just keep on churning out weird tight ends. Um, so here's the thing. He's a fullback, which is fine. Uh, and he's a like, cra crazy athlete, so ran a 4-6 in high school at the opening, which was the fastest wow. of any tight end in, in his class. Um, he's the best run blocker in this class. I assume mm -hmm. that's who you were, you yeah, were so promoing for. Yeah. And they lined him up uh, in line. They lined him up in the backfield. He's he's uh, like an A-plus run blocker. I don't know what that's going to get you. I think he's an athlete. Again, I said 4-6. They spread the ball a lot around it at Notre Dame. He wasn't the primary tight end. He mainly only played in 12 personnel. He had 19 catches this year. He's never had 20 catches in the season. This is a projection thing, but if you need, you know, an inline run blocker who's a, a, a plus plus athlete and could develop into a wide receiver, we don't really know. But I take the shot on Tommy Tremble at some point. Uh, I'm going with Trey McKitty, Georgia tight end. Uh, also kind of a bit of pro projection here just because the sample size from college is, I guess, kind of small. But uh, I think he's an excellent receiver. I think he's got really good hands. I think he's got good tracking ability. I think his route running is also really good. Um, he also is kind of a yak king um, above 50 percent, uh, 
yak percentage, yak divided by yards or yards divided by yak, um, which is, you know, excellent uh, from a tight end. I think he's a very good athlete. Uh, I, I think he's an adequate blocker. Um, I think he doesn't really get a good push. I think um, at the senior bowl, especially he got too wide and let uh, the edge rusher come inside too easily. Um, he also had knee injuries uh, like all year this year, ended up sitting out the, uh, the bowl game at the end of the year, try to get healthy for the senior bowl. And he looked good at the senior bowl. So maybe the knee issues in the past, um, but he just needs general refinement. Um, only 56 career catches. I think, you know, he's immediate number two, but I think down the line, he could be a number one in the NFL. So my fifth guy who I have a fifth round grade on early fifth round grades, big gap between the fourth guy and the next guy in this position group of this draft is Kenny Yaboa from Ole Miss. Um, similar size to Brevin Jordan. He's not going to juke guys out in the secondary like Brevin does, but he runs a four five. He's fast. That's his thing. Uh, I don't know if he's a great route runner. He's too small to be a blocker the next level. He might be a wide receiver for all we know, but he's he moves really well for his size. Um, he's a project. you got to teach him to run routes. He could be very productive as a pass catcher if it works out, but that's what you're talking about at this point in the draft where you're looking at tight end five. It's just, you know, what what what, what small things are exist that are special. He's a 245-pound guy who runs a 4.5. Cool. I'll take it. Make it work. <laughs> Yeah, your boy Yaboa is uh, very intriguing too. I like him a lot. You um, were just waiting for that. One. I was waiting. Oh, I, I forgot. About that. I was. I thought they was gonna do it. He didn't do it. I was like, oh, I gotta put it in here. Uh, my guy Tony Poljan from Virginia. He's tight end five for me. Probably a late day three pick. There's such a huge gap between the fourth and fifth tight ends. Only why we're only doing the four tight ends and the next best because there is such a huge gap. Um, and and honestly, like there may be six or seven only tight ends that are draftable in this draft. He's great size, though, Pole Jan. Max, you don't want to talk about Nick Eubanks? What no, do you mean? I do not I, no, I do not want to talk about <laughs> Nick Eubanks, Kylie Branson, all those guys. No, thank you. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> look, Tony Pole Jan, great size, man. 6'7", 265. He made a touchdown catch against Miami that not many tight ends in this class can make. He kind of caught it and then somehow stuck his foot in bounds. It was unbelievable. He's still new to the position. He was like, actually a quarterback originally at Central Michigan. That's um, kind of tight. I'm in on is, that. It's pretty cool. Logan He's, Thomas, uh, baby. Really, really good run blocker. Probably the best after Tremble and Fryermuth. But again, not a great athlete. He has three fumbles and only 83 career catches. I think he'd be a really good backup tight end. I don't know if he'll be much more than that. So though that is our tight end. Wait, wait, wait. One thing. Four tight ends uh, in this draft. And basically the next best after that. We're so just going to ignore Nick. What do you say? He just didn't mention that Tony Poljan is six seven, and I just think that's wild. Like, but okay, he is six seven. Yeah, I did say that. Did I not? Oh, I did. did? Say great size at six seven. I don't, re- I don't, I don't remember. remember. No, thanks for listening. He's I huge. Just, no. I just emphasis. He's thanks for listening. Great. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, okay, so please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Boom or Bust Draft. We're gonna look back at. I definitely said it. Um, look at follow us on YouTube Probably. anywhere at your podcast. Please like and subscribe to the channel as well. So for PJ Clark, Tate Sigworth, and Nick Miriam, I'm Max Shadwick. Have a great night.